I'm going to show how some of the custom work is done. We're going to use this uh, fender here as a cadaver. Um, if you were to, say, break a hard body or wanted to cut it and modify it, I'll show what uh, the methods I use. Um, I'm not going to break this one, I'm actually going to cut it at the seam they already got there just to make this quick and easy. Um, typically I use just a regular X-Acto knife. Uh, sometimes when cutting bodies I use this X-Acto saw, nice and thin, very sharp, fine teeth. It's uh, how I cut up that uh, crew cab in the background. Um, regular styrene, patching back together. I like to use this type of CA glue for gluing back together. And then I use this stuff here, it's polyester glazing putty for filler. With this hard plastic, if you take and just score a nice line down through it, it will snap right at that line. Take your sandpaper, clean up your edges, chamfer them back a little bit. Nothing too rocket science about this. just to clean it up a bit. And then, anywhere you're going to glue to, you'll also want to rough up. It keeps the styrene sticking to it better. And this out here will be need to be sanded too. You can do this now or later, but that's to help get your filler to stick to it. And the method I use to putting stuff like this back together like I did here, you can see, not anything too fancy cut, just mostly scrap pieces on this one, just to blend it back together. On this one, I'll have to cut narrower pieces, because you have to stay flat on all these different surfaces, and this here, being that it's curved, We'll have to use multiple different pieces there to get our joint back together. And since I'll be gluing this back down, I'll also need to sand this. And it's easier to sand it on this one whole sheet. Sand both sides because I'm the type of person to glue it on the wrong way. This for right at the moment. I'm 
Styrene's that easy. Now you can spend the time and make sure these are all straight cuts, but I'm just throwing this together real quick. Pieces will sit on there just like that. I have to use these ones I cut a little thinner. The bottle's just about empty. on there just like so when the styrene is sanded and stuck to the plastic the stuff will tack up pretty quick now if this is something you're going to be using in bashing uh, something like this you'd want to spend a little bit more time cutting up smaller pieces and getting more strips in here to completely fill this up to give yourself a stronger bond. You want to get some glue right on this edge too just to kind of hold the two pieces in. And this is a gap filling, so it helps fill in some of it too. If I was actually going for like a perfect finish on this, nice little backer. We'll let that dry up for a little bit. Alright, we're back. This is dry now. It's uh, pretty strong. Holding together. So we're going to do filler. First, we got some glue on here. We can sand this joint back smooth. I'm using a block of wood inside here helps to make it so even if you keep your block of wood on both sides of your groove while you're doing it it helps level your surface back out So 
I use standard Bondo spreaders. But for this stuff, I take, cut them up, and I will cut and grind different shapes on my edges for using them for different purposes. Like this particular one, or something like this, where I will spread my filler in here, and I will use this to clean the filler back out on that edge. It leaves me a nice radius filling. Filler, filler on a piece of cardboard here. A little dab of hardener on it. If you use a two part like this, more filler will dry harder and faster, or more hardener will make it dry harder and faster. Depends on how much time you have to work with. If you want a small spot like this, should be able to work pretty fast. Get that all mixed in uniform. A lot of guys like to use the squadron putty and other putties that are one part. I haven't tried them yet, I just ordered some squadron putty. The green, don't use the white, the white is junk. Take a little dab of this. Start laying it on there. Get all your grooves filled in. Now with something like this, we have a little bit of a seam in there. You're going to want to leave it built up a little bit because if you wipe it clean, you dip inside. Um, groove like this, a lot of times you can kind of go like this. Just follow it, but you want to leave a little bit standing up on each side of it. Knock all this big stuff down. Taper it off at the ends here a little bit. Save a little bit of sanding. I'm going to let that dry for a while and we'll come back to this. Alright, we're back. Filler's dried, a little rough. Sand her down. This is the boring part.
when you're doing this, you don't necessarily want to sand away all the filler. I'm going to keep it feathered out so when this is all painted, everything turns out to be a nice smooth surface. It's not always do you get this stuff put together perfectly flat, which also, when you're sanding it, instead of me sanding over here, you keep the keep your sanding block spread out over top of the surface keeping the repaired part centered as you can see here that line right there is where this was cut so one side of this fender by the way it looks to the filler it's actually a bit lower because I'm hitting more here and here so this will leave this part filled and when it's said and done it'll actually come out smooth I'll finish sanding this and come back to it. Okay. Said and done, you'll end up with something that looks like this. I spent some time sanding it. I didn't make it completely perfect because it's just as for demo. But see how we have some filler still left over here filled in with this surface being a little bit higher than this one. It took that to blend it, but the rest of it blended smooth. You see how I filled our gap in here. And then I went ahead and sanded the rest of this piece down to scuff it up. Used 180 on it, knocks the filler down. I'm going to wipe it down with some pre-clean. Get any foreign agents cleaned off of it. And then, on stuff like this, I like to use a filler primer. Um, it works good for this kind of stuff, because if you do have any more flaws or pitting in your filler or anything like that, this fills it in, and the next step will actually be sanding this back down. And I'll come back to that in a minute. Got down one light coat of primer, letting it tack up for a second. I'm going to try and spray this while the camera's sitting here, but it's kind of in my way. We're going to let that dry for a while and we'll come back and do some more sanding. Okay, we're back. We got primer dried. We're going to do a little bit of block sanding on this. We're going to see where our high spots are, if we have any left. We couldn't feather this out. No, I'm not necessarily trying to leave this primer on here because I'm basically using this as a filler. I'll reprimer this before it's painted.
Feels like we're coming out pretty smooth here. Now I'm just lightly sanding this too. I'm not putting any pressure on it. It's just primer. And if you have any low spots here, the primer is going to tell on you. you can see that gray spot right there? That means that that spot is lower than what this is flush. Because when I'm sanding it, that's still left behind. Which by the looks of it though, I sanded the top of it, so it might be smooth. If I was doing this as a show piece or a final piece, I would recoat this with a filler primer again until I knew it was smooth. But basically, I'll finish sanding this up to scuff it up. Um, from here, I would use a regular primer, um, sand it lightly, hit it with a sealer, and then spray it with my base coat and then clear coat it. Um, that's about all there is to it.